Well, let's go to the Word of God. Luke 19, I'm not promise you I'm going to preach. That's why I'm glad that Broderick, he, he took care of that. He did the preaching. But I do have a word that I want to give you or some words that I want to give you that God has been dealing with me about in the last quarter as we prepare on the threshold of a brand new year. Look at Luke, the 19th chapter. Now, parallel for this is in Matthew 25, but we want to focus on Luke 19. There's some very unique things in Luke 19, starting at verse 12, and it says, He said, therefore, certain noblemen went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return, and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. That's a measurement of money. And he said unto them, occupy till I come. Everybody say, occupy till I come. If you have a paper Bible, underline that, highlight that, occupy till I come. But his, cit his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us in the kingdom of the past, that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money. So we see that the 10 pounds was money. He called them to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. So you see, he said to occupy the expectations that you're going to take what I gave you and to gain some by trading. If you again, if you have a paper Bible, highlight that. I want you all to focus on this and meditate on this. Verse 16, then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained 10 pounds. Okay. Now somebody said, that devil is a lie. I ain't trying to gain no 10 pounds. <laughs> He's, he says, he, in other words, he said, your money has, I have doubled your money, is what he's saying to him. And he said, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have a, thou authority in cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. Okay? And he, and he said, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord... Behold, here is thy pound, which I have laid up in a napkin. Put it in a handkerchief to keep it in safekeeping. I'm giving you back what you gave me. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou taketh up that thou layest not down, and reap what you did not sow. And he said unto him, out of your own mouth, I'm a, I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere, according to what you said, I'm an austere man, taking up that I laid not down and reaping what I did not sow. Wherefore, then, if that's how you thought about me, then wherefore then thou gavest not thou my money into the bank? You should at least put it in the bank that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury or interest. And he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said to him, but Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you that every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath, shall be taken away. The word the Lord gave me for 2024, for right direction, and those connected to me as your man of God. And I want you to say it with me. Say, occupy and maximize. 2024 is your year to occupy and to maximize. We see that in verse 13. He called, he gave them the 10 pounds, the 10 measurements of money, whether that's $10 or 10 or $10,000. He gave them the measurement of money and said, occupy till I come. Now, unless you do some study, the way we use that word occupy, it means like you occupying that seat right there, okay? You, it's just sitting, taking up space. That is not what that word means at all in the scripture. The word occupy, as used there, it means to do business. 
Okay, if you have any reference of that, I'm not stretching this. It means to do business. And so he says, I want you to occupy the new living. Uh, I want you to occupy till I, till I come. Uh, the New Living Translation of that verse says, invest this for me while I am gone. Invest this for me while I am gone. I am gone. And so they went away, and then the New Living Translation of verse, when, when the man came back and doubled the money, and then one came back, and he got at least 50% as much. Uh, verse 15, it says, he came back to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. The New Living Translation said, so occupying is trading. Occupying is doing business. Look, look at somebody say, it's time to do some business. It's time to do some business. Okay. He wanted to find out, uh, the New Living Translation of that verse, verse 15 says, he wanted to find out what their profits were. He had given them something. He had started them out. Let me see the return on my investment. Okay. They call that ROI, return on investment. And the interesting thing is that the one who was wicked in his thinking, when we think wicked, we think demonic. Wicked means twisted. Wicked means tw he was twisted in his thinking because for, he says, well, I knew that you were an austere man trying to demand where you have not given. What are you talking about? It says the same thing in Matthew 25, that, that, that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown. What are you talking about? Everything you have, I gave you. God does not expect you to give anything that he doesn't first give you. And so he was wicked. What, what, what do you mean? The only reason why I'm asking you for a return is because it's a return. A return means I first gave it to you. And so in 2024, the Lord told me to tell you that it is time to occupy and maximize. I'm not going to have to be, have time to deal much with the maximization tonight, but I want to focus on occupying. Um, so the, the, the one, the wicked one, verse 20, he said, Lord, here's your pound. I kept it in a napkin, a handkerchief. New Living Translation says, I hid your money and kept it safe. This is the word of the Lord for 2024. No time for playing it safe. Playing it safe is over. If God is going to do great things through you and great things through us and great things for your family, you got to stop playing it safe. If I played it safe, we wouldn't be in this sanctuary. Because everybody said, don't do this. This is not the time. They didn't even consider y'all people. What you mean? Because they say people ain't coming to church no more. Y'all ain't even people. Don't do this. You cannot do anything great if you're just trying to play it safe. The greatest person who ever won on Jeopardy, um, I can't remember his name. I watched Jeopardy. Okay, I watched Jeopardy to see how smart I am or how dumb I am. Some nights I feel real smart, and other nights, just when I think I'm ready to apply and say, go on, then I said, no, nah, I ain't gonna do it. Sherry Shepard was on there last week, just embarrassed herself. She tried to joke her way out of it. It was sad. It just was sad. But the great, the great he used to, and the reason why the great, he was the greatest chapter of Jeopardy, because he would get down to it, he would say, I'm all in. Somebody say, you gotta be all in. In other words, he would, he, would, he would put at risk everything he had. He was not playing it safe. God said, you cannot play it safe, and I do great things with you in 2024. You're going to have to occupy to do business. Luke 19, 26, it says, the New Living Translation, the king replied to those, he said, he said well, why would you take it and reward the one who had done the most or, or had the most, give him more? And, he, and the reason he gives from Luke 19, 26, the New Living Translation says, the king replied, and those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. If you use what you have, 
God said, I'll maximize it. If you will use what you have, I will blow on it. If you use what you have, I will increase it. If you use what you have, I will send angels to reinforce and to bring you more. If you use what you have, I'll give you partners. If you use what you have, I'll expand your influence, but you got to use what you have. Come on, elbow, elbow somebody who may be sleeping and tell them you got to use what you got. So your occupying requires work and effort. The scripture, that word occupy, said in the scripture, see if I can remember how to pronounce it. Okay. The Greek word is, pra, is pragma tuome. Pragma tuome. And it literally means to do business. So he says, go away, do business until I come. Don't just be sitting on the dock of the bay watching the clouds roll away. But while I'm gone, I need you to be busy. What, what did Jesus say? I have to be busy about my father's. He said, I must work the works of him who sent me a while day. Night cometh when I won't be able to occupy anymore. It literally means to do business, to trade. Now, we use a form of the word in occupation. Some of them will say, well, what is your occupation? We say occupation. And what, and what uh, your occupation literally means is what do you do to earn a living? Let me give in a, a more basic. What's your occupation? What do you trade? What do you, how do you occupy? So when someone says, what is your occupation? Say, what, what do you trade? And I think we even need to think in, that, in those terms, in terms of whatever area that we're in, you are trading something. You are taking something that you have and providing a need in exchange for something. And so to occupy, it means to trade. Occupying this text means to do business with what you have. Trade, what, uh, trade is what you provide that others are willing to pay for in exchange with you. It's value. I, you hear me talk a lot about that. Value. What you add to others and to the world. Here's a question the Lord told me to ask. And I know that this, is, this, is, this, is, this is not for everybody. This is for some high level functioning folks. This, this is for some people who's, who say I'm not just the average person. A am, I am I in the right church tonight? Okay, this is somebody say, I just refuse to be average. I, even if I came from my average, some, some of y'all feel like you're out of place in your family. Because you know they don't think like you. Okay, they don't dream like you. They don't dare like you. They don't risk like you. They don't walk like you. They don't, they don't imagine like you. They don't use faith like you. And so this is not for average folks, but the Lord told me to ask three people not average to ask you a question. What will you leave in the earth? What will you, and I'm, and I'm not just talking about a baby. Because some people leave in them and they didn't mean to do that. Some do that and didn't even, don't even acknowledge that. And, and I'm not minimizing children, but even because, but you know, you, folks can do that without planning to do that. But what will you take the effort to, to use what God has given you to produce something and leave something in the earth that folks will know you were here? So a couple things I want you to see here quickly. They all had the money. They all had 10 pounds, but not all the servants did business with it. They, they all had something, but they all didn't do anything. Didn't do something, let me say that again. They all had something, but it, they didn't all do something. God gave them something to work with, but they didn't all work it. You got to work what God has given you. I said, you have to work what God has given you. They all had the money. They all were given 10 pounds, but not all the servant did business with it. Putting the money in the bank, he said, at least you should have put your, the money in the bank. Putting the money in the bank to get interest was the least they could have done. And by putting the money in the bank, it was not the maximized occupation. It wasn't the most that could have been done. It was the least that could have been done. In 2024, God said, stop thinking about the least you can do. Stop thinking about the, and, and some of y'all, you heard me talk about this. Some people satisfy 
or, or are satisfied with at least. Because you push them in the corner and they'll say, well, at least, at least I have a job. But you're not maximizing your potential. At, but at least I have a man, but he has no job and no teeth. And you're going to tell me, at least. Why are you settling for at least when God wants you to maximize? I told you I used to be an executive recruiter years ago, and, and used to, we used to train people to go on interviews, and we trained them how to address certain things. And so one of the questions, we, we used to try to advise people, don't talk about salary until you have an offer. Avoid it. Work all around it. Don't talk about salary. Well, well what is the, and, and then we would give them ways to work around it. And one, one, of the, one of the things that we used to tell them is that if they said to you, well, what is the lease that you would accept? What's the minimum, what are your minimum salary requirements? We say, oh, he, he, watch this. Why are we discussing minimums and lease when I plan to give a maximum effort? Why are you talking to me about lease and minimum when I'm planning on giving you a maximum effort? I need to know more about this job. And so stop thinking minimums. He said at least. Secondly, no more playing is safe. 2024 is the time to make some bold moves. Look, somebody say, I'm going to make some bold moves in 2024. Come on, everybody connected to me and connected to, this, connected to this church sees that God will bless you if you make some bold moves. Bold means you're going to have to go against what people say. Bold means it may not be popular. Bold means you may, not only, you may only have a word from God that only you and your husband or you and your wife agree on. Bold may mean that other folks just don't see it and it makes no sense. But somebody say, be bold. Be bold. So 2024, it's time to make some bold moves. Psalm 107, 23, it talks about those who go down to the sea in ships who do business on great waters. God wants you to do some business on some great waters. I say God wants you to do some business on some great waters. Listen to me. I've said this even for entrepreneurs connected with me. Stop calling your business a small business. Because though your beginning was small, though your beginning was small, once you started, it ain't small no because you've begun. Though your beginning was small, once you have begun, you are no longer small. You are in increase mode. Somebody say, I'm increasing right now. So you have to start thinking of yourself that you are laying the groundwork, you are laying the foundation to do business in great waters. So in 2024, no more lease. I'm making bold moves. I'm going to take big steps. And I'm going to occupy everything God has given me. So God expects us to give him back. Listen to me. God expects us to give him back more than he started us off with. Increase is in your hands. Come on, say that. Say increase, increase. is in my hands. Put your arms up and palm them. <laughs> say increase, increase is in my hands. Stop asking God to increase you without realizing increase is in my hands. So maybe a better prayer, Lord, bless the work of my hand because if God bless the work of your hand, increase is coming. God expects you to give him back more. The first instruction God gave mankind was to do what? Be fruitful and multiply. That's the first command. That is the first order of business as a human being is to be fruitful and multiply. God does not like stagnation. God does not like non-productivity. It got to the place where the children of Israel were in the wilderness and they had gotten content. And one day God spoke and said, you have been in this mountain long enough. You have circled this mountain long enough. Now it's time to move forward. 2024 is time for you to move forward. Those of you watching me and still talking about the pandemic, stop it. Shake it off and move forward. Stop looking back to 2020. It's 2024. The pandemic was almost four years ago and some of y'all haven't come back to church yet. 
Some of y'all become lazy on your job. Some of you don't want to go anywhere and do anything. You're going to have to move beyond stagnation because God does not like stagnation. John 15 and 2, Jesus said, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, I'll take it away. But every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. So it can bear more fruit. So when you start being productive, God will work on you to be more productive. When you have a desire to increase, God will help you increase. Come on. But, 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 but if you say, this is enough, I'm good, I don't need all that, then God said, then I, then I need to put my anointing on somebody else who can use it and believe that God has more for me and wants to do more through me. So to occupy, third point, to occupy, you must use what you've been given. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, he said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. I love this. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. He said, God put a grace on me, and I worked that grace. <laughs> God put a grace on me, and I worked that grace. Look, somebody, you got better work that thing. Work that thing. Whatever God has put on you, work it. Because nobody can do it like you. Nobody could throw and use a slingshot like David. He, could, he wasn't prepared for the spear. He wasn't prepared for the shield. He couldn't put Paul, uh, Saul's armor on. He said, but this thing I know God uses me in, I know nobody can do it better than me. You got to know what God put on you to do better than anybody else and work that thing. Stop trying to be like other people, reproduce other people, be authentically you and watch God bring the increase. If you decide to occupy and maximize you, somebody say, I'm going to occupy and maximize me. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So listen, you have to take some inventory of what you've been given. First of all, you've all been given faith. Anybody got faith? You already know you do. I just told you all been given faith. Romans 12 and 3 says he given to everyone the measure of faith. Start taking the faith you have and start using it. Use it to go to the next level. Use it for the next promotion. Use it for the next house. Use it for the next investment. Are you hearing me? Start taking the faith you have and use it for more. Take inventory of what you have. That's how you're going to get out of debt in 2024. I don't know if we realize this, but when we read in 2 Kings about the, about the woman, the wives of the sons of the prophets, she cried to Elisha saying, uh, your, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know he feared the Lord. And the creditor is come. He want, they want their money. And he's going to take my two sons away. And Elijah said, what, do I, what can I do for you? And then he didn't even give a chance to respond. He said to her, he said, tell me, what do you have in your house? So many times we're looking out. We're looking for it to come someplace else. Some of you got to see what you have in your house. What has God already given you? What's the idea he's already given you? What's the ability he's already given you? What's the talent he's already... What do you have in your house? She said, I don't have anything but a, a little, a little uh, pot of oil, a little bit of oil. What she had, she was despising. But he said, God is going to use what you have to bring more. That's the word. God's going to use what you have to bring more. You don't need anything else. You just need to use what you got. If you use what you got, God's going to breathe on it. God's going to increase it. Oh, there's an anointing that's coming not on what you need, but on what you have. Hallelujah. So don't ask for more until you occupy. Do business with what you have because Luke 16, 10, 11 says, if you're faithful in least, you're going to be faithful in much. But if you're unjust, if you're unreliable, if you're independable with least, you're going to do the same with mud. He says, so when you've been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, in the little that you have, now God's going to give you the true anointing. And as you use and do business and distribute in 2022, what God will give you is going to multiply, it's going to increase. Somebody say, God's about to increase it in my hands. 
Come on, y'all know the, the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. John 6, 11, he took the loaves and when he gave it faith, he distributed it to the disciples. That part's already been done. God's already put something in us. And the disciples then gave it to them. And as they gave it out, it increased. It increased. Come on, stand on your feet in 2024 and thank God that he's increasing you that he's blessing the work of your hands hallelujah hallelujah come on greet your neighbor tell him happy new year you about to occupy you about to maximize you about to blow it out the water the caps are coming off of you the leads are coming off of you the restrictions are coming off of you. The chains are coming off of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to another level. You're going to another level. You're going to another level. I'm not going to occupy. I'm going to maximize. Devil, you ain't seen nothing yet. You've been trying to hold me back long enough. Oh, but God has broken the chains off of me. I'm going to work the grace. I'm going to work the grace. I don't need something new. I got what I need to get to the next level. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Shout out to God! Shout out to God! I'm gonna occupy! I'm gonna maximize! Have your seats for a moment. Now, the Lord told me to prophesy several things over you for 2024. Speaking over you, there's going to be new opportunities for business, increase, even wealth, but you must be led by the Holy Spirit, watch this, to discern opportunities versus opportunists. Opportunists are those who simply want to capitalize off of you and capitalize off of your influence and capitalize off of your gift. So there's going to be opportunities that come. But during this time of fasting in the month of January, ask God to give you discernment and insight regarding the opportunities so you don't get taken advantage of by opportunists. God told his people in Deuteronomy 6, 10, and 11. He says, it shall be when the Lord shall have brought you into the land which he swear." To give you to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I'm going to give you great goodly cities which you didn't have to build. I'm going to give you houses full of all good things. Come on, some of y'all got houses in 2024. You're going to have furniture in all the rooms. Your house ain't supposed to be a museum. Good things which you didn't feel wells you didn't have to dig. Vineyards, olive trees which you didn't have to plant. You're going to eat, you're going to be filled and full. Isaiah 16 and 22 says, A little one shall become a thousand. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. A little one's going to become a thousand. A small one's going to become a great nation. Second, the Lord told me to prophesy over you. Listen to me. Again, I know this is not for average folks. International business and commerce. International business and commerce we live in an age now because of the internet you're one click away from somebody in an entirely 12 hour different time zone seeing you and seeing your product and making a connection international business and commerce write down Isaiah 60 and 5 he said they then you shall see and become radiant. Your heart's going to swell. The abundance of the sea 
shall be converted to thee, shall turn to you. And the wealth of Gentiles, those that don't know God, is going to come to you. That verse from New Living Translation says your eyes are going to shine. Your heart will thrill with joy. The merchants from around the world will come to you. That's Isaiah 65, New Living Translation. The merchants from around the world will come to you. Come on, look at somebody say, I'm going to do international business. Come on, if you dare to believe it. Now, if you don't believe that, this is, if this is above you, don't, don't say it. But what you got to lose? But, but I'm, I'm from South Carolina. I'm from, I'm from down by town. It don't matter where you're from. You have to look from the place where you are. Look from, look from, look northward, southward, eastward, westward for all the land that you see, I will bring it to you. The Lord told me to tell you, you're going to start getting apologies and repent, re repentance and recompense from people who have wronged you. Apologies, recompense, and repentance. Let me say it the way I wrote it. Apologies, repentance, and recompense from those who have wronged you. Isaiah 60, 14 and 15, it says, the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bowing to you. All those who despise you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet. The New Living Translation says, the descendants of your tormentors will come and bow before you. Those who despise you will kiss your feet. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Though you were once despised and hated, with no one traveling through you, I will make you beautiful forever, a joy to all nations. And then finally, and I ain't going to say 30 days. <laughs> Pay upgrades and increases. Let me add this word, significant. Pay raises and increases. No, no I didn't want to say raises. I said upgrades. See, you, you can get a raise without getting an upgrade, okay? But if you, if, if you, were, if you were, were hitchhiked in the work and they give you a company car, that ain't just a raise, that's an upgrade. So God told me, expect pay upgrades and increases. Still there in Isaiah 16, verse 17. Look at this, and I'm done. Instead of bronze, I'm going to bring gold. Instead of iron, I'm going to give you silver. Instead of wood, I'm going to give you bronze. Somebody say upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Instead of stones, I'm going to give you iron. I will make your officers peace and your magistrates righteousness. That verse from the New Living Translation says, I will exchange your bronze for gold, your iron for silver, your wood for bronze, and your stones for iron. I will make peace your leader and righteousness your ruler. The word of the Lord to the people of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, stand on your feet if you believe God. It's your year to occupy and maximize. It ain't over. Your greatest days are not in the past. I'm talking about back in the day. The Lord told me also this year to really pray and speak and encourage those of you who have, you know, we, we, we talk about entrepreneurs so much, but it's a whole lot of entrepreneurs. They out there just struggling. Okay? But many of you, you have corporate careers that God has placed you in that company in that environment for such a time as this. And there's going to be significant increase in promotion at an accelerated rate. God placed you there for such a, we're, you're the salt of the earth. Some of you are in positions and the whole reason why that department even still exists is because you're there. 
you, you are preserving it. <laughs> so God's going to be blessing careers, increases. And guess what, y'all? And you're not going to have to move to get it. I said you're not going to have to move to get it. In case y'all had not heard, South Carolina is the fastest growing state in the nation. Some of you had not heard that. The Midlands, this area, increased like by 2% last year. As when I cast vision for this sanctuary, because I felt like I, for many of you I had to cast vision, I'm going to sell it to you. Well, why are we doing this? And I told you, we weren't just building it for those who are here. We're building for those who are to come. For those who are coming. Look, somebody say they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. I'm, I know, I know y'all get here late and everything now. Enjoy it while you can. Because there's going to come a time you're going to have to line up to get in here. Hallelujah. Because we're going to occupy, use everything we have so God can bring more. Hallelujah. And when God increases you, listen to me, your skill level got to go up. Some of you, gonna, you need to get in a self-improvement program for yourself. To get ready to manage the magnitude of blessing and influence at another level. This is not that. Where you were is not going to be where you're going. And I just heard the Spirit of the Lord tell me this. And don't think you can take everybody with you. I know you love everybody. There's some people, they, they just can't go with you to the next level. You got some friends, you can't take everywhere with you. You may have to be like my wife. She went to the White House. I had to go to Cheesecake Factory. Sometimes you can't take everybody, and, and I'm, I'm very serious about that. Because some of you, you're so connected to people who are holding you back. You don't want them to feel bad. And some of them are family members. But I don't want them to think I'm all that. Watch this. And we've already said favor ain't fair. And not, not only that, remember what God told Cain? Cain was upset that God respected Abel's offering and didn't respect his. And God said, this, this, this is no brain. This is not, this is not a big deal here. He said, if you had done what he'd done, I would have received yours as well. People are not going to have what you have if they don't do what you do. I tell pastors who are connected to me and they look at me and they get all quiet. They're connected to me because they see the blessing of God on our life and our ministry. And I start telling them what I do. I said, I tithe. My church tithes. I sow to my man of God monthly, regularly, consistently. When I see other ministries doing things, I sow to them. Somebody asked me to write a plan or how we do this. And I said, I really can't tell you other than to do what God tells you to do, sow when he tells you to sow, give as he tells you to give. Some of this is no-brainer. Live the way he tells you to live. Come on, raise your hand to the Lord. Let me speak this over you. Father, in Jesus' name, Pastor Marcus, join me up here. I thank you for Right Direction Church. Every individual, every family that is connected with us. In these first few moments of 2024, I declare the blessing of the Lord resting upon them in greater measures. Every hindrance come down. Every wall fall. Ooh. Every fetter be broken. In the name, every, 
every spirit of containment be bound that they can move at the rate of the spirit of God into this next season of their life to this next season of their business for this next season in their careers for this next season in their families I speak the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow I declare that 2024 will not be a year of toiling it will be a year of grace grace, grace beyond measure oh God thank you Lord God you want to put that name in the wind phone calls and emails from unexpected places and they'll know what is of you I release the blessing of the Lord upon them we bind sickness and disease and confusion and anxiety in the name of Jesus. I declare we have the peace of God that pastors all understand. Keep their hearts, keep their minds stayed upon you. Keep them with hope and anticipation in the name of Jesus. Keep them lifting their eyes to the hills from which come their help because all their help comes from the Lord in the name of Jesus. I declare no weapon that's formed against them shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against them is already condemned. I thank you that their mistakes of 2023 will not hinder their 2024 because your grace is sufficient and your strength is made perfect in our weakness. I declare that they have the wisdom of God. They have the wisdom of God what to do, when to do it, who to do it with. They're able to see afar off oh god even your word says even as a net is set for a bird every trap that the devil tries to set before them lead them around and let them fly over it be a fix on around them oh divine protection over them their household their children's children in jesus name and father we just thank you lord god that our strength is being renewed lord god we thank you, Lord God, that our youth is being renewed, Lord God, that our steps are ordered by you in the name of Jesus. So we go into this year, Lord God, with boldness and confidence, God, that we thank you, Lord God, as we go forward, Lord God, doors will be open, God, and we walk through those doors discerning where to go and where not to go. And we thank you, Lord God, as we walk into the room, Lord God, from the doors that you have opened. We thank you, Lord God, that we discern the table that's been prepared for us, God. So I thank you, Lord God, that it is a confidence that comes on us like no other, God. That we know we belong there, Lord God. Therefore, the fear and disappointment and the heartache, Lord God, and the failures and, and the frustration of the past is only a distant memory as we step into the new. And we thank you, Lord God, as we take that step into the new, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, our arms are strengthened, God. Our eye gates are open, God. We discern and see strategy how to occupy in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you send help. We thank you, Lord God, that we build teams. We thank you, Lord God, as we move forward. We thank you, Lord God, for land. We thank you for buildings. We thank you, Lord God, for territory. We thank you, Lord God, for the phone calls, the emails, God, in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise and glory, Lord God, as we step across continents, God. We thank you, Lord God, doors open in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, we begin to plant, Lord God. We begin to build, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, they say we heard of you. We've been waiting for you. You are what we need. Therefore, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, there is a noise in the atmosphere that the kingdom of God has come. We're advancing in power and strength and might and wisdom in the name of Jesus. So we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Because 2024, we're going for more. No more looking back. We're stepping in. We're moving forward. And we thank you, Lord God, that the best is yet to come. Our steps are magnified in the name of Jesus. We stand tall. We stand strong. And we take long steps in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor in the name of Jesus. Here we come 2024 in Jesus name
happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. Live, 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 live,
bowed, eyes closed.